Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Kudi, and I've got my entire team around here. And today we are going to talk to you about how to measure follicles, how to measure normal follicles and how to measure the antral follicles and when to measure them. Number one, if you decide what is the right time to scan a patient, do you, should you scan on day two, day three, day four, or should you not? And the answer is that scanning on day two, day three, day four does not make any sense. It increases distress and makes the patient more uncomfortable. And the reason is that you can decide on the cyst formation, your antral follicle count formation, just before the periods. Follicles, which are supposed to grow, have already been decided. You cannot stimulate more follicles than can be seen. Now, if you do an antral follicle count today and stimulate, let's say, in three months' time, you see different responses. And the reason is that antral follicles keep changing. For a large number of patients, the antral, you know, measuring an antral follicle count outside a stimulated cycle is adequate. The reason is they're good responders. Good responders recruit, you know, in a very good manner. Poor responders don't. And that is, it's the only reason why you have to start treatments in poor responders when antral follicle counts are good. Now, how do you measure antral follicles? Do you need a 3D ultrasound? And the answer is no, you don't need a 3D ultrasound. Do you need a good ultrasound that can do good 2D ultrasound? And what I would suggest is, if you see an ovary, check the volume. Always. The reason is that if you have a small volume ovary and you've got too many antral follicles, there's something wrong. When I mean wrong is, you may be missing a hypohypoc. You see big follicles. Now what are you aiming to see is you're aiming to see follicles <coughs> that are of different sizes. And the question is, how do you measure them? Now again, it is very much the same. You measure follicles take a mean diameter and measure them. These are very small follicles and it does not matter. The largest di two diameters you take. So in this fix, take both the diameters and you will be able to measure it. How is it important? <coughs> it's important for a couple of things. Number one is when you, if you take an ovary, and you draw a triangle in it. This is dominant follicle. Your follicles will be ranged in different sizes. And what I would suggest is, is draw a line at four millimeter. Follicles which are less than four millimeter usually form the second cohort. Those in the more than four millimeter form the first cohort. So when you see a poor responder, follicles here will tell you how many follicles will grow. So there it is wrong to take a combination of both because you may tell the patient you've got 16 antral follicles, but only four or five may be at the top. The rest may be very small. Also what it tells us is, as your follicles start growing, they get more difficult to stimulate. So uh, let's have a look at your <coughs> PC ovaries. You see PC ovaries with small follicles. What does it tell you? Small follicles have a be better control or a much bigger control of AMH. These fo follicles will not get stimulated. Try what you want. But these are the small follicles that will push the patient into overstimulation. It will increase the estrogen levels. It's only these follicles that will grow. So it's very important to know what is the antral follicle. And the way you measure it is, however small, take two diameters. So that is, in short, what you do with antral follicles. It's very important that you measure antral follicles 
approximately. Do, do you need exact size? No, but it gives you an idea. So whenever next time you do an ultrasound scan, have a look at the antral follicles, have a look at how the antral follicles recruit. Also, the Thika tells you the story. The Thika tells you about LH predominance. So the bigger the, the Thika, the more the Thika, you're going to have a difficult stimulation. And that's the, how I decide whether you need to do a step up or a step down in IVF. Whether you need to increase and a large amount of it is based on the Thika element and the size of the follicles. Thus, no count follicles. You've got an ovary. Two ways of counting it. One, do you use the outer and outer and outer and outer. That's one way of counting it. Second is on the line and you take the measurements exactly on the line. And the third is you go from the inside to the inside of the follicle. Now I was taught to do this. Measure the inside rim to the inside rim. Because that gave you the size of the follicle. I don't think it makes a huge difference. It probably increased by 0.1 millimeter or so. But that this is what I was taught to do and I use it for the way I calculate it. So what I tend to do in my practices, which is slightly different, is I usually scan women around day 21 before I start a cycle. So day 21, what do you get an idea on? You get an idea on the corpus luteum, your idea on the antral follicle count. Okay. Now, if you see an antral follicle count, which is like this, you know that probably day 21 stimulation is not going to work. But then you see them on day 28, just before a period, and see what happens to antral follicle count. Why? Because antral follicle are constantly being recruited. And if you, in poor responders, doing an antral follicle count, which is uh, at a low time, is not going to give you eggs. That's sometimes what the problem we have. Pre-treating poor responders also reduces antral follicle count. So, you know, what you decide is, sometimes if you see the protocol, I write progesterone. Why? Because progesterone allows us to schedule. It doesn't cause synchrony of follicles. But also it allows it to work closer with nature. Any questions?